Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and as companies report earnings, the numbers are actually much worse than what they appear. Companies have been fudging their numbers in order to keep their stock prices up. I'm gonna tell you what's happening, so let's get into it. Let's go over what the company's actually reported, and then we'll dig a little bit deeper to show you why the numbers aren't quite as good as they seem. United Airlines posted a net loss in Q1, but they forecast a profit for the second quarter. This is right in line with what Delta did. Delta also had a loss for Q1, but they forecast a profitable Q2 as well. Despite some people calling for an economic slowdown or recession, United joined Delta Airlines in reporting strong travel demand for the spring and summer. Of course, when it comes to United and Delta Airlines, both of them are predicting that they will be profitable because they believe that the fuel prices are going to remain low. And if fuel prices remain low, then they will be able to turn a profit. Of course, with oil prices going up, it remains to be seen if they can actually turn a profit in Q2 or not. Now, the headline numbers you're going to see out of company earnings, such as United, in this particular case, was an adjusted loss per share of 63 cents versus an expected loss of 73 cents. Total revenue also was a slight beat at 11.43 billion versus 11.42 billion expected. So United's revenue was higher than expected and their net loss was lower than expected. So they beat earnings expectations, right? Well, not quite. Because United fudged the numbers a little bit to make their loss seem smaller than it actually was. You see here how it says adjusted loss per share? Well, essentially what companies are allowed to do is they are allowed to make adjustments for what they consider to be one-time items. And what this allows companies to do is it allows them to remove certain losses from their earnings and they can report better than actual earnings. So a company, and I've seen this before, where they actually lose money in the quarter, but then they exclude all of these one-time expenses, as they call them, and they magically report a net profit. And that's exactly what happened here with United. United had a significant loss in the quarter, but by excluding certain expenses that they consider to be one-time, United was magically able to beat earnings expectations. And that's why we saw the stock go up almost 2% after hours after already rising over 1% on the day. So even though it appears like United Airlines beat earnings expectations, they only did so by fudging their numbers to make their revenue and their earnings appear to be better than they actually were. So I want you to be very careful this earnings season and don't just accept whatever headline numbers come out because just like we saw with Delta, Delta initially rose in the pre-market when they reported earnings, but then during the day, once people dug a little bit deeper and realized what Delta was actually doing, the stock sold off. And so you might see a stock rise after hours. You might think you're good, you made money, only to see it sell off during the day and the next day because people have dug into the numbers and they start to realize, wait a second, these numbers aren't nearly as good as they first appeared. They've been faked. Now that said, let's move over to Netflix earnings. And this is another lesson in being careful about the headlines. The headline when it came to Netflix earnings was that Netflix gained 1.75 million subscribers. And that's good news, right? Because last year, Netflix was actually losing subscribers. So the fact that they gained subscribers this year is a good thing. Well, not so fast. Netflix did add 1.75 million subscribers in the first quarter. But the company had to take a series of steps to expand its customer base, including launching an ad-supported tier of service and starting to limit password sharing. 
Now, later in the earnings, we found out that they have delayed their limit of password sharing. They haven't fully rolled that out. So really, the increase in subscribers was due to their ad-supported tier. And of course, the ad-supported tier brings in significantly less revenue, meaning those subscribers are worth a lot less money than a subscriber who's paying full price. And that's really the problem with Netflix is, yeah, those ad-supported tiered subscribers, they might increase the subscriber growth rate, make that look really good. They're even going to increase revenue and make that look good. But they're going to cause profits to go down. And that's exactly what we saw. Revenue rose 3.7% year over year to $8.17 billion in the first quarter, while net profit fell to $1.13 billion from $1.6 billion in the prior quarter. And of course, with these new ad-supported subscribers paying less money, the company's operating margin also fell to 21% from 25% in the first quarter of 2022. So at first, you see Netflix subscribers going up, you see their revenue going up, and you think, wow, this is great. Netflix just had great earnings, buy the stock. But once you start digging a little bit deeper, you get past the headlines and you get past what Netflix wants you to hear, and you start to realize, wait a second, this actually is not good for their bottom line because it hurts their margins, and more importantly, it hurts their profits. Now, if there's any hope for Netflix in the future, it's that they have delayed their password sharing crackdown as they've run into a little bit of difficulties rolling that out here in the United States. Once Netflix does do a little bit more of their password sharing crackdown, that should help improve those revenues and profits a little bit more. Overall, Netflix reported a $2.88 earnings per share versus $2.86 expected. Revenue was a slight miss at $8.16 billion versus $8.18 billion expected. Notice that this is not adjusted earnings. This is actual earnings. So unlike United, they're not fudging the numbers. Still, people were disappointed with the decline in earnings and Netflix stock was down a little over 1% as of the recording of this video. So be careful this earnings season because as the economy slows down and as revenue starts to go down, as earnings start to go down, companies are going to do anything and everything they can to make it appear like their income statement and balance sheet and earnings are actually a lot better than they really are. So be very careful about some of the manipulation that very often happens during times of economic slowdown and recessions so that you don't get fooled into thinking that a company is performing a lot better than it actually is. Now, the most recent fears we've had in the economy was the banking crisis. And funny enough, the banking crisis kind of fixed some of the problems that the banking crisis caused. The bank's bond losses caused the crisis, and now the crisis is reversing the bond losses. The ripple effects of the banking crisis are reversing one of the problems that actually sparked it. Rising interest rates over the past year have caused banks to be hit with losses on their huge portfolios of bonds. But since the failure of the banks sparked turmoil in the banking sector, Falling bond yields have actually narrowed those losses. As bond yields or interest rates go up, that causes bond prices to go down, and that caused banks to be sitting on massive amounts of losses. But once the banking crisis occurred, bond yields started to go down over hopes that the Fed would start cutting interest rates. And I'll get to more on that in a minute, show you exactly what people are currently hoping for. And as those bond yields have gone down after the banking crisis, that sent bond prices back up, which means banks' balance sheets aren't showing nearly as much of a loss anymore. Bank of America released its first quarter earnings on Tuesday, and while the bank is still deeply underwater on its bonds that it's holding to maturity, 
the unrealized losses have shrunk by 9.5 billion from three months ago, and they're down 17 billion from six months ago. And just like JP Morgan, Bank of America posted a profit of $8.16 billion in the first quarter, which is up 15% from a year earlier. Revenue also rose 13% to $26.26 billion. So while banks were initially hurt by inflation, banks are now thriving in this high interest rate environment and bank earnings should continue to go up so long as interest rates remain elevated. In just a minute, we'll talk about just how much the Fed plans to raise interest rates by and how long they plan to hold them there. For now, just keep it on your radar that the next Fed meeting is only two weeks away on May 2nd and 3rd. And Federal Reserve's President Bostic sees one more quarter point rate hike and then a hold for quite some time. Bostic thinks we need one more interest rate hike to get inflation down. And from there, he thinks the FOMC can watch and wait as the legs that come with monetary policy work their way through the economy. CME futures are in line with Bostic, with 83% of people expecting a 25 basis point or 0.25% interest rate increase at the meeting in two weeks, and only 16% of people expecting the Fed to pause. But what's most interesting is that after the Fed raises interest rates in two weeks, the market is pricing in two rate cuts this year. And as I've mentioned before, in order for the Fed to cut rates, one of two things has to happen. Either inflation has to get down to 2%, and nobody sees inflation getting down to 2% by November, where the Fed would have to do their first rate cut in order to meet the market expectations. Nobody expects that. The only other reason the Fed would cut rates before the end of the year is if we entered a recession. And I'm telling you, if we enter a recession, the stock market is going to be in a lot of trouble. So either the stock market has to go down and reprice the fact that the Fed is not going to cut rates, or the stock market has to go down and reprice the fact that we're about to have a recession. Either way, the stock market's overvalued right now from a fundamental standpoint. Now, as I've explained before, market psychology-wise, stock market remains extremely greedy. And with the VIX as low as it is, I do expect the stock market to continue to rise for probably the next two weeks. But after that, the old saying, sell in May and go away, it could really ring true this year. Now, if you want to make money with us, we've got a coach in our coaching program who's made over $40,000 in the past six weeks, and she's in there teaching you how she does it so that you can get in there and follow her and make money right along with her. If you want to learn how to make money with options and make money no matter whether the market goes up or down or even trade sideways, schedule a call with my onboarding specialist who can get you into my coaching program so that we can teach you how to make money in the stock market no matter which way the market goes. You can schedule a call with the onboarding specialist and find out more about the coaching program at weprofitdayandnight.com. That's weprofitdayandnight.com. If you got a lot out of this video, then be a good friend and share this video on your social media pages so that others will know what to look out for this earnings season as well. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you missed the video I uploaded a few days ago where I gave my stock market predictions for the rest of this year, make sure you watch the last video that I uploaded here.